Hi, I'm Adam. This is Kevin. And we are Tech Guys Who Invest. This is the place for business people and investors to learn all about investing. We offer a fresh perspective on what it's like to have a day job while investing. And we share lessons learned on our investing journey. Our vision is to educate and entertain you while adding tons of value to your daily commute. Welcome to our show. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast, where each week we teach you how to invest wisely and safely. One of the awesome things about real estate investing is that there is a way to make money in every asset class, in any asset class that you could think of. If there's a unique investor out there that's doing something so niche and so specific, they're making money, that just goes to show that you can make money any way, shape, or form in the uh, asset class of real estate as a whole. And with that, there are advantages to particular asset classes and disadvantages to particular asset classes, whatever you pick. What it boils down to is knowing your investor identity. By the way, we created a, an investor identity canvas for you. So all you have to do is go to tgwipodcast.com forward slash canvas. And when we're talking about this advantages today, we wanted to share kind of a little bit, be a little bit transparent about the asset classes that we specialize in. For example, Adam's going to talk about disadvantages of multifamily. I'll talk about the disadvantages of mortgages. So Adam, uh, why don't you first start by sharing what would be, I guess, maybe one or two, maybe even three advantages of investing in multifamily, and then we'll dive into the disadvantages. Yeah. So advantages of investing in multifamily are, it's one of the best ways to massively grow your wealth over time. uh, It is a fantastic way to really grow wealth. Um, so, so that's a big advantage. Uh, an, another one is, uh, in terms of the way the investments themselves work, um, being able to take advantage of economies of scale, teams, and systems. So by playing at that high level and playing the big game, you're able to take advantage of those things I just mentioned to make the investment a lot more profitable over time. Um, And then another advantage is if you are a passive investor, it's extremely passive. You basically put your money in and collect your money. (laughs) So that's very passive. If you're on the passive side of that type of investing. So um, let me just state one disadvantage to start off with there, having said those advantages. If you do want to be a passive investor, it takes money. So, you know, you can, you can hustle and you can, you know, come up with ways to add value to teams and things like that and, and be able to kind of get started with other types of investing. You can do some of that if you're on the active side of multifamily investing. But if you want to be a passive investor, most syndications have something like a $50,000 minimum. So it would be a disadvantage for someone who, say, has you know ten dollars or $20,000 that they would like to passively invest. That would be very difficult for them to find a deal that they could get into for that. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, that's more so for the protection of the passive investor, right? They want, there's a, to my understanding is that minimum helps ensure that, hey, we want to make sure that this 50,000 is a part of a greater sum. Additionally, if you can save up that 50,000, it highlights that you are more uh, sophisticated financially. You're more literate financially as well. Is that right? The the real reason for that particular barrier is more about not splitting up or fracturing the partnership too many ways. Gotcha. It, you know, if you have too many investors in a deal, uh, there are a lot of additional administrative overhead costs and efforts. And, you know, it, it's just a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Right. Now, what you're talking about though, uh, factors in uh, in terms of the type of offering that is made, whether it's a 506B or a 506C. Uh, for you know a 506B 
offering sophisticated investors are allowed into the deal, but they have to have some sort of a pre-existing relationship with the operator. And they, they need to be sophisticated enough to understand what they're getting into and to know that there are risks involved with investing. Okay. So that Kevin, makes sense. Let's talk notes. What are some advantages of note investing and maybe a disadvantage? So when it comes to note investing, just a reminder, you're, you're the bank, you're not the landlord. And that is a huge, huge advantage. You don't have to worry about maintenance. You don't have to worry about repairs. You're never thinking, oh, the toilet's broken. The, the borrower isn't going to call you and say, hey, can you fix my toilet? You would say, what am I supposed to do? I don't own the property. You own the property. I own the debt. Just make sure you pay me your, your mortgage, right? That's probably a really big disadvantage. Uh, typically, like burnt out landlords, people who've been in the space for a while, transition to note investing for that very reason. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, I would say another advantage would be is the security. You are protected by the property that is uh, the, the borrower owns, right? You own the debt. And if the borrower ever defaults, you're protected by the value of the property, right? You can take back the property through a foreclosure. There are multiple ways that you can take back that property. And then from there, you can get creative. You can either rent it, Airbnb it. You can create a new note. There's so many exits that you have at your disposal when you are the lender. And that's a huge, huge advantage. And the last one I would say is, is even if you are an active investor, performing notes doesn't really get any more passive than that. You sit back and collect the paycheck that is uh, from, from the, the borrower, that principal and interest that the borrower pays you. So now that we cover those, those three advantages, the most common ones I would say are the strongest ones in my opinion as well. One of the disadvantages is you can't escape the taxes on note investing. There's just no way you can't really claim depreciation. You have to pay the interest on, uh, sorry, you have to pay the taxes on the interest you accumulate or get paid from the principal and interest of the note. And to my understanding, uh, it, it's taxed as ordinary income. Um, there's no depreciation of it. I would say that's probably one of the disadvantages. So if you're a high net worth individual and you're looking for a way to decrease your tax bill, note investing, unfortunately, won't do that for you. Uh, so Adam, what's another disadvantage of uh, being a multifamily investor? I'm going to stick with the passive side of things and uh, say it can take time for the flywheel to start. And, and I kind of call it a flywheel because I think of it as a, a flywheel that you slowly start spinning and it takes time and you keep trying to spin it faster and faster. And eventually over time, it starts spinning on its own. It gains a lot of inertia and then it, that's when it really starts to grow significantly. Um, but, you know, at first, uh, it can take time for that to happen. I mean, first of all, like I just said, you know, it's, it's somewhere around a 50,000 minimum in a lot of different operators cases. Uh, and then depending on the type of deal they're doing, a lot of times uh, it could be six months before you receive your first distribution because the new operators coming in, they're stabilizing the property with a lot of these deals. It's a value add play and they are trying to add some value to the property in some way to increase the revenue it generates. Well, that also takes time. So what you do receive in your first round of distributions is going to be smaller, right? You're waiting for that value to be added and for that additional revenue to be built. Um, so that all can just take some time to get going. Kevin, what would you say is a second disadvantage of note investing? So with the second disadvantage of note investing, I would say uh, inflation isn't your friend. So what I mean by that is whether you rent out a single family unit or a single family property, or you have a multifamily unit that you own or a partnership of, you can do a value add in the multifamily and raise the rents. And then in the contract, there's probably going to be something like you're going to raise the rents every year by X percent. The same should hold true with a single family where you raise the rents X percent. And usually it's to help kind of combat the idea of inflation, right? Because the cost of repairs, the cost of materials, cost of things are just going to increase. 
you don't have that luxury when it comes to being a the lender because that you know, investor or sorry that borrower is locked in contractually that we both agreed upon the lender and the borrower to paying let's say $500 a month for the next 30 years that's just what it's going to be there's no like hey uh this $500 isn't worth $500 like it was 20 years ago. It doesn't matter. That's what you've locked into. So I would say that's a, a disadvantage that uh, note investors have is you can't really combat inflation, which is, I think, larger than, um, has a larger impact on your portfolio than people give it credit for. Good one. I think that's, that's great, Kevin, because uh, someone who didn't have your expertise might not pick up on that. Yeah, it just takes time to... Um, to understand that. So definitely get educated on whatever investment you're thinking of bo before you take the dive as an active or a passive investor. Yeah. So what, what, what would you say is your last uh, disadvantage? Not like an absolute last, but just the last one for this podcast episode. Yeah. So the third one here, I'm going to shift to uh, active investor like myself, somebody who wants to get into the game. Uh, there are high barriers of entry to this game. As I mentioned, the big boys play here. It's, um, you know, a bigger game in general. Um, and it's really tough to kind of crack into that, that insider network of, of brokers and, and bankers and, and the actual players. Competition's really stiff. So if you're coming in as an amateur, it's tough to even get some people to, to talk to you seriously. Uh, brokers will give you kind of like the the leftovers that the experienced people wouldn't take because they weren't great deals. And um, it can be tough to sort of work your way into that insider's network and start getting those good deals brought to you. And um, when it comes to, to financing, of course, um, you need to be able to demonstrate some sort of, of track record and experience and have certain net worth requirements because all of that's considered in your, in your application for the debt. So you have to overcome all of that stuff in some way. Now, the way we overcome it is by partnering up and things like that. But again, you have to establish those relationships. You have to find those types of partners and that can be tough. High barriers of entry there. So Kevin, what's, what's the third uh, disadvantage to note investing? I would say the third disadvantage of note investing is uh, it's a depreciating asset, just the very nature of it. It's a depreciating asset. A, a note is an asset. And even while the property that you have the note, uh, that you, the note is secured against or secured by, even if that, that house appreciates by 30%, whatever it may be, the note is decreasing because the, the borrower is trying to pay off that debt. So the, you'll make the most money at the beginning of the note because it's mostly interest and then eventually it teeters over to become more principal. But at the end of the day, it's still uh, each year goes by, the principal balance is less and less. So I think that's something that to consider is that you don't get the advantage of appreciation, which you could argue appreciation is gambling anyway, but that's a whole nother topic for a different <laughs> episode. Uh, but yeah, I would say those are the disadvantages. And, and we'd Excellent. love to hear your thoughts, uh, everybody. If you you know agree, disagree, please send us an email techguysinvest at gmail.com. We love to interact and you may be able to shift our perspective on one of these points or provide us with new ones that we, we weren't aware of. Yeah. And certainly there are many more advantages and disadvantages that we could have talked about. It's funny, as we were talking, I thought of a few more. Uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> both advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and, um, and, there are many more out there, but we just wanted to kind of give you a few. And these are likely things you may not hear about if you're listening to the gurus or the experts, whoever those people are. So we just wanted to share that. And there's one last thing we'd like to leave you with. So in 2021, Kevin and I have a big goal of 250 positive comments on Apple podcast. It means a lot to us because we can get the word out to more people if they learn about our show. And if you can leave us a five-star rating, a quick positive review, that will help 
it rank higher and more people to discover us. So we would really appreciate it. And if you're not sure how to do that, because sometimes it's not so intuitive, we put some great instructions on tgwipodcast.com forward slash review. So you can head over there and check it out. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Hello, TGWI insiders. We'd like to talk to you about our big goal for 2021 that we're determined to hit, but we need your help to hit it. Our goal is to get 250 positive comments on Apple Podcast. You can help us in less than one minute, even as you're listening to this podcast episode. On your phone or computer, you can do this in three simple steps. First, search for us on your Apple Podcast app. Second, navigate to our podcast page by clicking our logo. And finally, scroll to the very bottom where it says leave a review to leave us a five-star review and a positive comment. You can also get these step-by-step instructions by going to tgwipodcast.com forward slash review. It's fast, easy, and would help us a ton. Thanks for your support, insiders. That's it for this episode of Tech Guys Who Invest. This is Adam. This is Kevin. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast for the latest episode updates and to receive additional investor insights to help you invest wisely and safely. You can join the TGWI Insiders community at tgwipodcast.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, we would love to connect with you. The best way to reach us is by sending us an email at techguyswhoinvest at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.